mute this guy from the conversation here because what I would suggest for the folks that are playing from home, they could just <laughs> handle some introductions amongst the three of them that are on the phone uh, without having to hear us all jibber jabber in here. I and make think it we can mute it. Difficult. Yeah. And then they'll be able to talk to each other, right? Yes, yeah. that, is yeah, that's, that is my oh, yeah. Start. Yeah. You you for more than one. Okay, but you can't use yourself. All right, oh, so folks on the phone, we are going to mute you so that you can talk to one another. I'm oh, sorry, well, I'm going to mute us so that you can talk to one another and do introductions while we do it here. In the room. So, all right, thanks. We encourage you, I encourage you to talk to people you don't already know, have these characteristics. You do? Okay, mingle. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Get up. 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 Get David has been going to China. I knew that. I knew that. You know, David has been to China. Dawn, did you have bingo? Did I have a bingo? Yes, I did. So tell us something about somebody in the room. Amy hates cold weather. Amy, I'm sorry. Going around, who else? George? Uh, Don has served in the legislature and he didn't. He said something nasty about. Um, it's about the same as eating bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> Amy. Um, Dan attended school in the district in which he now serves. Yay. Oh, I wow. knew nice. there was somebody in the room who did that. Well, <laughs> Kim? Heather is a vegetarian. Yes. Michelle? Mm -hmm. get Colleen right lives on a dirt road. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, I hope this gave you a chance to talk to people you haven't spoken with before and to get to know a little something about them as you begin your work together as a board. Awesome. On time, right? Can we say who's on the phone just so everybody in the room knows? Uh, yeah, so for folks that uh, know on the phone, we've got Christina, uh, Judy, and Kevin, unless there's anybody else that has joined the call. So were there any right oh, answers? Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not sure if, there, if all of the questions had somebody in the room who could say yes. That I am not sure of. Um, but as far as right answers, if you've got five in a row, that's a right answer. Yeah, I have five in a row. Okay. Five different people in a row. <laughs> Can I take one more minute of this welcome and introduction section just to have people introduce themselves, or do you want to do that? No, no, go right ahead. Okay, so I really am remiss because we should have started with, let's all introduce ourselves. We'll start with Neil. Ah. <laughs> That'll teach me to hand things over to you. Um, uh, I am Neil O'Dell. I am uh, a board member in Norwich. Um, and also the board chair then in Dresden. We are an interstate school district with Hanover, New Hampshire. And president of uh, and the And president of the VSBA. <laughs> Sue Siglowski, I'm the new executive director of the VSBA. I've been working here as the director of legal and policy services um, prior to that. And also have served as, as a school board member for many years. <laughs> with a family member. <laughs> and has eaten insects as well. I've so. eaten insects as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when your parents are pets. <laughs> uh, Dan MacArthur, I, I, uh, I'm the vice chair of the Marlboro School Board where I went to school, my children went to school, and my grandchildren now go to that school. Oh, nice. And I uh, am the uh, regional representative from Wyndham Region. Um, I'm Michelle Braun. I have been on the Montpelier School Board for several years and now the Montpelier Roxbury School Board and a new Washington Orange Rep. I am Kim Gleason and I am the Vice Chair of the Essex Westford <coughs> School District Board and I've been on the VSBA Board for a bit, um, most recently serving as Treasurer. And also representing? Oh, representing Chinton. Yeah. And Grand Isle. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, thank you. But you, you're excused because you have only for another year, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was move, fast forwarding to, no, not at all. Terribly missed. Thank you, Jim. 
I'm Colleen McKinnon. I'm from Hinesburg, and I've been on the Chittenden South Supervisory Union Board, which is now Champlain Valley School District. And I'm representing uh, Champlain Valley, Chittenden, Chittenden Grand, Grand Isle. Isle. Um, filling in for Diane for a one-year term. I'm Amy McMullen. I'm from Windsor, and I am the chair of the Mount Escutney School District, which is Windsor and West Windsor, and I'm chair of the Windsor Southeast Supervisory District, and I'm Windsor representative. Uh, Mark Love just joined the board. I've been seven years the chair of Peachum School Board, uh, which is part of the CCHU, <coughs> which has gotten to be a big group now with Act 46. And I guess we have Kingdom East, and we go all the way down to Rivendell at this point, if we accept the new districts for our representation. So uh, we've got a big geographic area with the VSBA new regional. That won't actually take effect until next fiscal year. Okay. It was just voted on last week. It's just an FYI. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> George Gonda, uh, it's my second year as a board member uh, for Wells Springs, which is one of the legs of Greater Rutland. Uh, county and uh, well, and representative. Hi, I'm Nancy Russell. Uh, I'm serving my second term as a school board uh, director for Hartford School District. Uh, I'm the new Windsor representative, and uh, I do a lot of work with children because my own model business, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather Ganya. I chair the Caledonia Cooperative School District Board, which is a pre-K through 8 Waterford, Walden, and Barnet within CCSU. Um, so representing Caledonia and Southern Essex for PSD. I'm David Chandler. I'm from uh, the Bennington Rutland Supervisory Union. I'm the vice chair to this guy, and I'm also on the Taconic and Green. I'm the clerk and uh, uh, school board, the Taconic and Green School Board. And uh, that's a good start. So, stealing my thunder, yes, I'm on the Taconic and Green uh, School Board uh, as a member, uh, I'm chair of the Bennington Robinson Supervisory Union. Um, and your name. And your name. And, oh, Jim Salz. Yeah, I don't even have a name tag, so. Jim. I'm the mystery person. Uh, Jim Salz, give her. Uh, for, for in the Bennington region. Uh, Don Collins, and I'm currently on the new Masisquoi Valley School District and of July 1. But prior to that, I served on the Masisquoi Valley Union High School District, and prior to that, Swan Elementary School District. And I'm a Franklin County rep, and I am so happy because we have a new rep. <laughs> She's going to be in attendance and participating this month. I know her family. She's smart. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm Tara Sweet. I am the chair of the Fr uh, Fletcher School District and the Franklin West Supervisory Union. I'm also the chair of that board this year. Um, one question that wasn't on your little bingle thing is I actually, I, I work, or I don't work, I live on a working dairy farm. One of the last few. I bet you've milked a cow. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> I reserved that job for my husband. <laughs> I'm Susan Holson. I'm the director of education services for VSBA. I've been here about two years. And as some of you know, I've also been on school boards with Colleen McKinnon, who was my SU chair. And I'm Carrie Lamb. I'm the director of operations for VSBA. Um, I've been here for 18 years. And um, I have also served on the Barrytown School Board. And as a football coach. And my husband's a football coach. <laughs> I'm director of football operations. <laughs> um, Adrian Raymond. I'm from Shrewsbury, Vermont. I'm a Rutland rep, and I serve on the Mill River Unified Union School District, which is one of the Act 46 mergers. Thanks. And then um, on the phone, why don't we start with uh, Christina? Oh, Although she might have stepped away. Yeah, she's trying to juggle two things. So she might not be able to it's got to unmute the guy. Ah. <laughs> yep, we got you. So, uh, yeah, I'm the new 
I'm chair of the newly formed Wyndham Southeast Supervisors District, which is Battle Road, Putney, Gummerson, and Guilford, and represents about 2,200 students. Thanks. Wow. Uh, Kevin? Kevin Hansen, I uh, am one of two Addison reps, and I am on the Mount Abraham Unified School Board for this is year two for me, so I'm a, I'm a newbie. Um, I, my, myself, my wife, and our two daughters all attended Mount Aid, so it's a kind of a local affair. Another one. Nice. <laughs> and Judy. Um, can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, good. I have too many things going on. Um, I am Judy Murray. I am uh, the rep for currently Washington Orange, soon to be next year Kingdom South, I believe. Um, I have been on the Blue Mountain Union School Board since 2013, and with the uh, redrawing of the at two boundaries as a result of Act 46, um, I, we are now part of the Orange East Supervisory Union, and I am the vice chair of that board. Um, and I'm fairly new to the VSBA board. I, I stepped in for a, a rep that uh, uh, resigned in August, and then I was just duly elected. So I'm, I'm pretty new, too. Perfect. Um, I just want to say thank you um, to all of you guys, uh, the ones that are here for another go-round, and also the brand-new members that we're welcoming tonight. Um, it, I really appreciate the commitment because I know it's not easy, um, but I think that you'll find that this is a pretty great board to sit on. Um, we get a lot done, um, but we have some fun too. Um, but you'll see the, the impacts that your work here has, um, both at the local and at the state level as well too. So thank you for taking the time. We greatly appreciate it. Um, Moving on then, uh, to let you know actually what you'll be doing when <laughs> you're <laughs> And so I will turn it over to uh, Sue and, and Susan for that. Thank you, Neil. So normally when we have new board members at the VSBA, there is an orientation prior to this board meeting, but we have so many new people that we felt like it was important to um, go through the information with everyone, so everyone's operating from the same um, information. So there is a PowerPoint presentation that's up here. It's also in your packets. So if you can't see it, you can look at your packet, or you can certainly move um, around so that you can see it. Just a little background on the VSBA. It's a nonprofit organization, and it was incorporated in, way back in 1961. And the purposes are um, on the slide, promoting and stimulating interest in education, cooperating with other organized educational groups, and assisting school directors in promoting better educational opportunities for the children of Vermont. And it's governed by Board of Directors, which is here, and um, has bylaws that are modified um, from time to time. And those, uh, we do have a few that were modified um, just last week at the annual meeting. This is just a review of the general standards for nonprofit directors um, from Vermont statute. And um, a director is required to discharge their duties, um, including um, being a member of the committee, acting in good faith, and with the care of an ordinarily prudent person in like position, and in a manner that um, they reasonably, reasonably believe to be in the best interests of the association. I skipped one. There we are. Okay. Um, in, back in 2016, the VSBA board adopted a code of ethics, and that has uh, expectations for board members in it, and um, a process for resolving any issues at the board level, and it tracks Vermont statute um, regarding the um, duties for nonprofit boards. And the first um, duty in the statute is uh, duty of care. And this requires board members to take care of the association by ensuring prudent use of its assets, um, facilities, and people, and um, generating goodwill. 
um, also providing oversight that ensures that the activities of the association advance its uh, effectiveness and its sustainability. So that is the duty of care. The next one is a duty of loyalty. So the duty of loyalty requires that board members make decisions that are in the best interest of the association. They're not in an individual's self-interest, um, and that includes personal or financial interests. And um, it also includes avoiding taking any actions or making any representations that would compromise the authority of the full board to make decisions on behalf of the association. And the last one is called duty of obedience. And basically this one is just ensuring that the association is following its um, laws and its bylaws. And our bylaws are in this uh, booklet that you received. The booklet includes the bylaws, the resolutions, and the policies. And um, so we're ensuring that those are being followed. Um, and that board members are conducting themselves um, in meetings in uh, adherence with those policies and purposes and uh, not engaging in activities that, that would harm the association's mission. And uh, just to follow up, what is an association? It's a group of people that come together to solve common problems, meet common needs, and accomplish goals. And the next part, I'm going to, um, I'll click, but Susan's going to. I can gonna, click from here. Oh, you can click from there. Okay, I think perfect. so. I can. Uh, so when I'm talking with individual boards, we talk about who are you really representing, and that's very much germane here. The question is represented, whose interests are you representing by being on this board, and whose interests should you be representing? So you have a region that you're responsible for, for, and so that cluster of geographic members, or at least those who attended your regional meeting, are the ones who sent you here. So are you representing them, or are you representing the agency, uh, excuse me, the association as an organization? So sometimes the needs of the local and the needs of the statewide association may not align and this is the question for all of you is who are you representing in that setting um, and there isn't really a right answer um, but transparency is really important so your constituents hopefully when I say constituents the school board members in your regions um, need to understand and you need to understand, are you representing for the association or representing of the local? If you believe you're representing for, I'm sorry, I said it backwards, then you think you see yourself as representing your particular geography in this case, your constituency. And the, so the voice that you bring to the party is self-interests and opinions of that constituency and you vote on behalf of those beliefs. If you're represented of, then you're looking at the whole association, recognizing that you're bringing a voice to the table that does I, speak to the, the values and the beliefs of your region, but then you, you are putting them into context of what's best for this statewide organization and our members statewide. And so then you're voicing the interests and opinions of the people you know best, but on behalf of the overall best interests of this body. So there's a, a subtle difference there, um, and I think that's one that a lot of board members grapple with, both in your, your local work as, you know, and here. So just to kind of put it out there in the open. So we encourage you to define your role, or the, and the bylaws really do too, saying that you're responsible for oversight of the organization, which means you're representative of the association. Um, regional reps, hello? 
Regional reps develop liaison relationships, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, to make sure that your regional school board members know what's going on here and that you have their input as well. So like any good communication, it's two ways. Uh, so we, in the form of Carrie, provide to each of you the email lists of all current board members in your BSBA region. Um, we ask that any correspondence that you send out also copy Sue, the executive director, just so we're in the loop as to what's going on at, the, at that level, at the regional level. Um, and Neil. Hmm? And Neil. Oh, so and I'm sorry, Neil also, president and executive director, so the bases are covered there. Um, Carrie, tonight we will send you an introduction email to your region. I already did. Aren't about you? quarter of five they went out, which this is why I was is, rushing around. This is why we love <laughs> Carrie. George. Did, did you fix my email? I don't know. I didn't know it was wrong, so we'll check it at dinner time. Okay, I'll check we it. We talked about it at uh, Did you get it, George? If you did, then she fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I did. We'll talk about it later. And just a heads up, because January is just around the corner, you can tell today. January is School Board Appreciation Month, where the SBA makes an effort to recognize all of the many 884, I think it is, volunteers around the state who serve as elected representatives on their school boards. Um, er the early read, just so you know, for this January is that Darn Tough Socks, who supported us last year by offering every school board member in the state a free pair of socks, has signed on again. I haven't been able to get the details from them yet, but it looks like we're good to go on that again. And, and that's just a small thing that we as an association can do for our members to remind everybody that they're not alone. You know, <laughs> we all know how much work and how much hard work goes into board work. So Carrie and I, and we'll talk about staffing levels in a, a, later on in the evening, we report to the executive director. Um, Sue, actually, I kind of stepped past my... I'll do this one. <laughs> so, so once yeah. I get going, I just don't know how to stop. You should have shut me up soon. So the staff report to the executive director who reports to the board. So that we ask, um, this is similar to how um, things operate with school boards, that if you have a request for staff to perform work that's outside of a task that's assigned by the board or the executive director, um, that it should be raised at a board meeting for full discussion by the board, um, or certainly you can speak with me. Um, the executive director should be copied on all email communications between board members and staff. And um, if you have questions, they should be brought um, to me quickly so we can get them resolved. End of slideshow. Yes, mm -hmm. end of slideshow. Carrie, so can you just click to this follow up, I just wanted to make sure that you all have this it, and, and it's good to bring it to every meeting um, if you can because it certainly is something that we refer to a lot. It's our bylaws, our resolutions, and policies. And every time that you come to a meeting, there will be the mileage sheets, so these orange sheets, um, and those are, uh, you can fill out, you need to put your address on the first one that you fill out, but after the first one, Carrie will have your address and you just need to put your name on it. And, and sign it. And, and sign it. The signing is the important part, that's what the auditor is looking for. Okay, <laughs> so make sure you sign them and um, you can hand them in. Should we want it the first one of every year, or for us to yeah. go for a while? Nope. Once I have your address, I, I we're all set. I just 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 to confirm that I have the right address is what it is. Does anyone? Oh, go ahead. I, I was wondering if the uh, if the association handbook is updated based on the changes that were made yes. at the annual meeting. So this is brand spanking new then. Actually, Hence why no. another reason why I was off yeah. the press. Why I was running around so frantically right at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to get it all in. Does anyone have any questions about the roles of the SBA board or about the handbook? Uh, this this is Kevin. Um, obviously I'm not at the meeting tonight. Um, 
Is the handbook in electronic form or something that can yeah. be sent out? It will. You'll get a hard copy of it in the mail. We'll send you one in okay. the mail, Kevin. And and actually, we okay. do update the website with our um, bylaws and resolutions. It hasn't so. happened yet, but it will be yep. very soon. Yep, <laughs> it'll be up there. Just wondering, is it, okay, great, thanks. Is that going to all school board members or just the board? The handbook? Yeah. That's the VSBA board handbook. Okay. I was just thinking, okay. <coughs> okay. Any other... Yeah, David. I just wanted to comment on the on the presentation, the uh, the section on representative for versus representative of. Uh, I appreciate the effort to make it nuanced in the when it states representative of that whole nuance because that's uh, people are much happier with black and white, and it's much harder to articulate a balanced dynamic, which is great. And I think whoever did this has done a very good job of expressing how it is really important that we, we do express the views and beliefs and values and self-interests of our organization, I mean, of where we come from, our region, because that's what we know. And so if we, and I'm struggling with this uh, on our local level, where uh, our board has come together and everyone feels that they can't represent they can't express viewpoints from their constituency. They, they have to express the viewpoint, some, some imaginary viewpoint of the whole. And I think it's, it's really smart to allow us to talk about what we know best and then see how that blends together into a new and forges a new and unified consensus. So I really appreciate this effort to not be black and white and to try to capture a dynamic which is really difficult to capture. Thank you. You know, as, Su as uh, Susan was going through that, I was looking at this, I'm thinking back to the last two years in my region where I had one town that probably was the last holdout for merger in the state. They were very active and you get calls, if not, probably not daily, but certainly weekly don't support anything that's going to close our school, which, you know, there's not, we're not closing schools. And then you had other people who would say, I, I see some real advantages to this. And so you then come here, and it's not like who calls you last or who shouted the loudest, but you, you try to work through that and say at the same time, but where, where are we as a, for the city of Vermont? So that, that can really be a tugger. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Most of us experienced it, right? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I will say that, I mean, I think the whole um, the whole Act 46 discussion, you know, beginning with, at the very beginning, all the way through to um, the issue related to delay was a very difficult um, item, you know, for a lot of folks, but for this board as well. Um, you know, what I can say um, going forward is that uh, I, as chair, want to hear the opinions that everybody brings to the table. Um, we'll do our best to, to talk through those things, to have a discussion on it. Um, but, you know, on the flip side also, it, you know, eventually things will come down to a vote. Um, and and one, one side will prevail and one won't. Um, and I hope in the interest of a, of a good functioning board that collectively we can get around whatever the decision that was made at the time. And uh, that is the position of the board moving forward. And um, you know, I hope that collectively we as a body can, can support that, um, knowing that we did the due diligence of the, of the discussion and, and all of that beforehand. So um, this is not, uh, <laughs> some of it's easy work, but it's not all easy work. And there will be times when we disagree, um, but I hope that we can, um, understand where everyone is coming from in, in those discussions, and I will do my best to make sure that we um, head that way and in that direction. Um, did, did anybody else have any comments or, or questions related to the, the role of a VSBA board member, or are you all just tremendously excited, looking forward to the prospect of doing this for the next year? And you are excited. I, I, I am excited. <laughs> I also want to contest something that Don said, that maybe one of the last holdouts to Act 46 is in your region. I, <laughs> I think I got them all. <laughs> Sorry. But I will continue to, to uh, bring their concerns here and express them, and then we go from there, as Neil has said. So.
You won that battle because after Sue and Susan, right, came and talked to our board, and then at the regional meeting, they convinced one of our younger board members that the SBA was a good organization, forward thinking. And when we voted to join, and that one, I'm, I'm talking to the superintendent like the day before, thought it was dead in the water, we were out of it. Uh, but thanks to that uh, fine gentleman, uh, we, are in the, we are in the mix. So you won that one there. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I will add to on this topic is for all of the new board members and even for some of the board members that have been here for a while, if anything ever comes up in discussion that you're like, what are you guys talking about? Like, because you haven't been here for a while, so you don't have some of the history, please raise your hand or come to me or send me an email, give me a call later if you didn't want to bring it up in the meeting, and we will do our best to make sure that we'll get you up to speed. But you're you are not required there to sit there oblivious to some of the decisions that have been made by this body before or some of the things that have happened already. So don't, don't hesitate. Please reach out and let us know if we need to explain something. Um, am I correct in assuming that we are now sort of back on or ahead of schedule? Yes. Um, and dinner is scheduled for 6? Six. 6 o'clock. Can I just say, too, I don't know if some of the new people know this. We videotape all of our board meetings. And they go up on our website on the About Us section of the website. So that's why I came this here. <laughs> yeah, so while we are a private organization, um, for the sake of transparency, all of our meetings are recorded and then posted. So don't say any disparaging things about your fellow board members back home. <laughs> they could find out about it. And that would make things a little awkward for you. Um, but that being said, I think Carrie just stepped out. Did we want to cover anything before dinner? Or if dinner is ready, did we just want to... Uh... I'm not sure if it's ready. So we could certainly um, go a little further in the agenda. Okay. Susan, Can I just point? put in a really quick plug for the podcast series? I'm recording board members from around the state, not just the SBA board members, on a quickie 15-minute podcast series that we're going to be introducing in January and I particularly reach out to you since we see each other once a month and I'm available to record you either before or if you're really dedicated after this meeting um, <laughs> here in the office which makes it better quality than if we do it over the phone so if you're interested or if I can twist your arm reach out to me please thank you mm -hmm. Um, and actually, what I think might be good, so the part of the discussion over dinner was to discuss the regional representative outreach plans. Yes. Would you mind describing that to, to the new folks that have not had to do that yet, exactly sure. what they're going to be talking about? Yes. So yeah. over dinner, we would like you to um, get together with the other regional representative from your region if they're here. And if not, you can certainly join another group and talk about the ways that you're going to be um, conducting outreach to the board members in your region. And um, as Susan said, you should have received an email earlier today before the meeting with all of the um, contact information for all of the board members in your region. And um, if you can sort of strategize uh, ways that you're going to be reaching out to them. And we, what we suggest is that you have, um, you know, quite soon, an initial email to them, introducing yourself to them, especially if you're new. Um, that would be great to open up those lines of communication so they'll be able to get in touch with you. So that's the plan for over dinner is to um, talk about how you're going, whether you're going to do that you know, together, the two of you, or whether you're going to do it individually, and, and um, sort of your plan for how, how the two of you are going to um, keep your regional um, board members informed and also get information back from them. I was thinking it would potentially be helpful to kind of try to put together a best ideas from all of that and share them, <coughs> share them around. You know, if, you know, if we, somebody else is going to have a better idea than I have for sure. <laughs> so I was, if I can jump in here, I was going to suggest that we do that because I remember last year it was really helpful to get ideas just go around the room. If you've got a good idea, um, then people doing it in their own uh, duo will be able to say, how about this? Honestly, I haven't had any luck whatsoever with my, with my region. Uh, Christina and I send out a thing and uh, I don't think we get a single reply to it, which is frustrating to me. So if anybody's got good ideas. Spring them now. Is that okay if we spend yeah. a few minutes yeah, on that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Colleen? 
um, not hearing from your constituency is a good thing. <laughs> that means people are happy. <laughs> when you're unhappy, then you'll hear from them. Um, I was just wondering if, um, I, you know, Kim's going to teach me so much. I'm going to learn so much and follow her guidance. But I'm just wondering if there are centralized communications that are going out from the VSBA so that we don't uh, cross our messages in any way, so that it's consistent messaging around the state, and I don't know what your past practice has been, or if there are thoughts about that. Yeah, so there, so there, yeah, to the answer to your question is yes, there are centralized messages that come out from the VSBA, and what you will find is that uh, in addition to this introductory email that we encourage all of you to send, because you are the newly elected reps from your region, um, there are certain times throughout the year where the executive director will um, come forward and say, hey, it would be really helpful if I could get you as the regional rep to engage your group on matter X. Um, and so in some cases, we can provide some uh, template email language for that outreach, um, or you could certainly also use that as the basis for crafting your own email. Mm -hmm. Did I yes. capture that? Yep. Accurately. Just, uh, Oops, sorry. I, I, in, in the past, in a similar vein, um, you know, there are some regions where if, if your local legislators are particularly influential in certain committees or on certain subjects, then I found in the past the executive director reaching out on that could be, could be a, good, mm -hmm. a good way for us to be able to serve the mm -hmm. organization and the cause of education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we're talking maybe about... Uh, you know, four to five times a year that we'll be asking you to send these emails out. We want to be conscious that we're not getting up your board members too frequently, so it just becomes noise. Um, but on some particular issues that we think it's beneficial for you to have that local outreach and, and to help the board in that matter. Done. So the previous uh, representative with whom I served, uh, we had talked about sending out, like, after a meeting, kind of key information or of decisions that might be made. It, it, it really never came to pass. We did, just didn't connect uh, with our schedules and uh, decided we'd go and break it up. I do certain districts and she'd do certain districts. But why I'm raising that is, as I've thought about it, would it be inappropriate when we get the agenda? We, we usually see the agenda, what, four or five days before the meeting? Friday. You get, yeah, you get it Friday. To take and send out to all of the board members in our region, letting them know what's on the agenda in case they want to give us input. You know, you could certainly many send organizations them the agenda. report what happened, yeah. but I guess as a board member, I would rather know what maybe is going to happen yeah. mm -hmm. if I wanted to than getting a report. Well, we just at, at BSBA on the 13th of November, these are the four or five major decisions made, whatever. That's kind of like, well, they did it and they're telling me. And they're not apologizing, but they're telling me. But would it be appropriate to maybe send something out before the meeting, if, if the time is there, and say, you know, we're going to be there uh, Wednesday night. If any of these if you have any thoughts on any of these topics, I don't know. I don't want to open a can of worms and have people start uh, guessing what the talk, what the agenda item means. But uh, some people think about. Yeah, we we don't get extremely uh, detailed in the agenda, as you've noticed. So, that I suppose that that is a uh, a possibility. I think I, I'm not looking for an answer tonight, mm -hmm. and Tara and I need to speak. But occasionally there are three or four items that might be of interest to people. I'm not, you know, a building by Coochers advisory council probably, probably isn't of much interest, although. Uh, if some people felt really strongly in my area, they might say, we hope you will seek that. Uh, I don't see that happening because I've been very active with them. They probably just assume that I didn't seek it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, just something to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough to get communication. It's really tough to get communication. But that's why we should work at it. Sure. Any other questions related to the outreach or the discussion that we've teed up over dinner? Dinner's ready. Seeing none. Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, oh, awesome. Excuse me, John. Before we go to eat, I think it'd be appropriate. <coughs> we have three people on tonight on the line. Yep. Uh, to go through the agenda. I mean, it's kind of unusual to have that many people on the conference call, isn't it? To have three people. 
Yeah. Um, just to let them know what else is on the agenda. Oh, they, I'm sure they, they all have, have the packets. Are oh, they yeah. all board members that have a packet? Right. It was all. It, it, they yeah, have. Well, a, I know they, they do. Uh, if they're like me, they're right there by the phone, and their packet might be somewhere else. But anyway, <laughs> you get okay. it while they're all right. Dinner. So, folks, just, um, just tell them to read their. <laughs> we're we're going to pause for dinner. Um, Don wants to make sure that you've all got your agendas with you. <laughs> um, so, if you don't. Please feel free to let me know, and we'll make sure that we uh, send it to you again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take that as a positive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please feel free to grab some dinner. And, uh, I hope that your uh, discussions on your regional outreach <laughs> went well. Um, I let Carrie know I do have. <clears throat> I will dig up one of the prior emails that we sent out in the Windsor region that Amy and I did a while back. If you're looking for a template of what we've done in the past, it just might help you a little bit to give you an idea of um, the types of outreach that we've done in the past. So I'll <clears throat> pass that along to Carrie and she'll forward that to you all. Um, the next item up on the agenda is our VSBA strategic plan. So for those of you that are new with us, um, the, the VSBA does have a strategic plan. Um, we actually are in the process right now of updating that. Um, the last plan, which ran from 2017 um, uh, was very useful for the organization. And the strategic plan that you see that's included in your packet tonight is really just an extension of that plan from 2017-2019. So not a whole lot has changed. Um, but what you see currently in the packet is the work that um, a committee did um, was uh, uh, developed some more at our annual retreat, which we held back in June. June. Yeah. Um, then it was polished up a little bit. <clears throat> um, so in your packet tonight, is the current state of the new strategic plan that we are working on for your review. Um, the intention is to bring this back uh, in the December meeting for board approval. Okay, So you don't need to act on it tonight, but we did want to go over it briefly. And for that brief overview, I will hand it over to Susan. Susan. <clears throat> so for background, if anybody's interested, I have copies of the 2017 to 19 strategic plan as it was approved and we've lived with. So if any of, especially the newer board members want that to be able to compare, I will send these around and help yourselves. Oh, can I have one? <laughs> uh, so, the follow modeling what we preach <laughs> in strategic planning, we have um, five goal areas that we have included in the strategic plan, and, and it was the will of the committee and the full board at the retreat to maintain those five, and they are education leadership, support for good governance, educational equity, labor relations, and internal management. And so those five continue on um, in the proposed 2020 to 2022 plan that you have in your packet. And I did not include this in the packet because I didn't want it to be confusing to have two of them in there. But if you do to undertake a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll see that there are not a ton of changes. There are subtle shifts. Um, and the, the old version that we just passed around also includes strategies for accomplishing those indicators, and, and which speak to the goal statements in each of those five areas. As is the case with a strategic plan for your district, which I'm sure you all have, um, it's up to the administration to establish those strategies to address the indicators that have been approved by the board. And so for our discussion in December, it is our intent to have strategies in there as well. But those are really more for exposure than they are for deep discussion by this body. Yeah, Mark. Susan, what was the process to get to here? Uh, I cannot speak to the original one, because I wasn't around in those days. but. 
Um, the process for the modifications that were made is there was a committee of this body, which I believe was four members, who, or maybe five, who volunteered to be on that committee, who reviewed um, the existing plan, decided it was not too far off from where we want to continue to go, and made a few minor changes, and then, as Neil said, it went to the entire board at the board retreat, which is in June, and we did a lot of work with it there with the whole board, um, which led to more changes um, and some subtle shifts in focus based on what we've already accomplished towards those particular goals. Um, and then the committee put this back together again with incorporating those recommendations and suggestions. And the committee has passed this on so that it's ready for board discussion. And then we kind of stalled because we had personnel shifting and uh, board vacancies and it, it just wasn't, it, it didn't feel like we could be doing this in a meaningful way. The other piece of it is... I will, <clears throat> I will add to that as well too, that we also did a, a survey. Oh yes, well, thank you, we did. Um, <clears throat> so we did attempt to capture um, input beyond just this body. So there was a survey that went out to full VSBA membership um, that asked them to um, opine on how well we were doing in meeting the the set of goals from the last strategic plan and whether or not we thought that those goals should be carried forward in the new one. And then there's a question, I think, of anything else that you think the VSBA ought to be focusing on. So that did go out to the full membership and we used that input to help drive the what you see in the current document. Thank you, Neil. That's right. And <clears throat> again, modeling good board behavior, um, the staff, we, we don't have this included in tonight's agenda or packet, but typically at these meetings, the staff provides you with a strategic plan monitoring report so that you have progress reporting on a regular basis on these different goal areas. And the, the format of that report also identifies which indicator, what strategy, and then, I, and then shares the outcome information uh, that sort of strings that along in terms of the work that, that we as a staff have been doing over the last month, or occasionally it's two months. Yeah. Anything else? <coughs> I don't think so. Okay. I think that covers it. I, I will say that the, the monitoring report that you will typically see in your board packet, I think, is a very useful tool just to make sure that we... As, a, as an organization are sticking with the items that we've outlined in our strategic plan to make sure that we're doing what we said we were going to do. And also I think it's a great way for staff to make sure that the items that they're working on match up with something mm -hmm. in the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And then when we get together on a monthly basis to review that monitoring report and we can say, yeah, we're doing you know, exactly what we thought we were doing or you know, uh, checking in on a few things to say, I'm not sure I understand what's going on there. Can we get a little bit more of an explanation? So um, I will say when I first joined this board, I thought that that monitoring report and, in fact, the whole strategic plan, um, it was very eye-opening to me to sort of, I guess, as Susan mentioned, modeling the type of behavior or the type of action you'd like to see in your own board, it was a great tool. Like, I could essentially look at the agenda, look at that monitoring report, and know that what we had done collectively as a group over the prior, prior month was absolutely meeting the things and the goals that we set out for ourselves before. So it was a really great way to make it tangible for me. And just to close that loop, it is something, when I go out and meet with boards, it's something that I strongly encourage. And <clears throat> I use our mechanism as a, a sample, an example of an effective way to monitor <coughs> your district's performance in, in various ways. So happy to talk to any of you about that. This is yeah. Kevin on the phone. Yep. Um, I'm kind of late to the game, but um, looking at... Um, section one underneath indicators, uh, bullet four. I don't, I don't see any reference to Act 173, and I was just wondering if there was a reason for that. Are you looking, and so you're looking at section one, education leadership, and then the fourth bullet item under indicators? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
I wasn't around when that was developed, but I'm thinking it's, it refers specifically to the agenda for a world-class education, and I believe those were the, uh, that was the legislation that they identified Yeah. That pursued that agenda. <coughs> the agenda also. Yeah, also kind of, in item three, okay. educational equity, uh, third bullet is not referred to either. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm asking why. We spent a lot of time in September discussing 173, mm -hmm. and there was consultants hired with a consortium, and it seems like there's some effort and there's some action or activity around it. Why it's not in the strategic plan? Right. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't see any reason why we can't include any of the items there. The only danger that I find in doing something like that is sometimes uh, um, the names change on things, and so you refer to something as Act 166 or Act 173, and then a few years down the road forget what that. We don't know what year the act was to. from. Yeah, and then the right. act numbers get right. reused. Right. So yeah. Amy. So what. Sue was saying, this is Amy, I can't remember who, Kevin. 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 Um, there was a meeting probably three years ago, maybe four years ago, before Act 173 was even probably being talked about, and the meeting was between the Vermont School Board Association and the Vermont Superintendent Association that developed the world-class um, agenda for a world-class education, which was proposed maybe eight or nine years ago. And this meeting that we had three years ago, maybe, was to see what was still relevant, where we needed to be working. And at that point in time, it was only Act 166, Act 77, <coughs> 46, Etc. And that's why 173 isn't there, is because that wasn't part of our conversation for the agenda. Okay. So that was enacted more recently then? Uh, Act 173 was, yes. Yes. But I do think 173 would fall under any of, the, at least two of the pillars under agenda for a world-class education, so right. I think mm -hmm. it would make sense to add it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty critical piece of legislation that speaks to assuring success for every student, and supporting a new vision for teaching and learning, engaging and supporting families and communities. So I think that um, if we're speaking to the others by specific name, we'd be wise to include it. Okay. So can I actually have, we really willing to make that update for... Oh, yeah, definitely. <coughs> if, if there's consensus. It's sounding like there's, I didn't see anybody opposed yep. to it. So, no question. Yeah. Uh, Dan. Well, that sort of brings up the question that I was going to ask. Uh, what if we come across something at home? It almost seems like we should just put all of these suggestions into a, 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 shared. a, a shared document of some kind uh, rather than do them by consensus, but say, okay, this came up. This suggestion came up, et cetera, and then deal with them all, all at one time. Does that just seem to make sense? Or can I bend them to the... Yeah. <clears throat> that may be the only one, but we may stumble across stuff when we're looking at it, too. That... Yes, I would defer to staff as to whether or not, you know, via the Google Doc or some other mechanism, or do we have the ability to... Susan? Well, we do have the ability, <clears throat> but I'm almost wondering if that isn't better held for the next meeting. For the discussion prior to adoption? I think what, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I think what Dan is, is suggesting is that maybe over the course of the month those things are added to the document and then that would be the basis for the discussion that happens at the next mm -hmm. meeting. Right, so you don't just bring it cold to the meeting and say, <clears throat> here's what I think, but rather have a chance to review it ahead of time or whatever. Yeah. I will say, depending on how many changes are there, I am a little hesitant on mm -hmm. that approach because it can turn into a word wordsmithing exercise exactly. that I want to avoid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kelly? Um, just two comments. One is just, um, I'm wondering about, does that turn into discussion and that's not a warned discussion? It's okay, we're not a public body. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So technically that piece, yeah. but... 
But there's that piece. Yep. Um, and then I'm just wondering, um, is there, what is the value in actually naming the legislation instead of just keeping it to the world class education as defined and then that document? And I'm just wondering, what's the value in listing mm -hmm. um, the legislation? Because you could leave something off a list every time you have a list, something mm -hmm. gets left out. Um, and so what's the purpose, what's the intent behind this particular s bullet for this particular session? Mm -hmm. Section. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know, I wasn't yeah. part of the yep. drafting yeah. or anything, I'm just... I'm wondering if you and I don't remember necessarily, but um, I think there, it could be that there was concern that these were acts that weren't yet being supported in implementation, and so rather than letting there be something else that before these had the support for implementation, but I don't, I don't recall the crafting. I'm sure I was around for it, but the crafting. I do remember the meeting that we had collectively. Yeah, that. Um, but I would maybe it's dated. Maybe Colleen, right? As we look at it with fresh eyes. Do we need to delineate the acts that we're speaking about? Mm -hmm. Just a, to kind of a, a thought on that. It, I, I actually find it useful because it becomes less generic and more specific. However, it can become dated very quickly. Which you know, one way you can deal with that is, you know, such as Act 166, etc. Mm -hmm. Kind of leaving room yeah. that you could. To, then to 173. Say when 173 comes, it's on par with those others. It, mm -hmm. You know, can sort of almost be assumed. And maybe just have the, you know, if it's there, have the full name of the act. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, as a staff, we talked about that. It's, uh, we're going to have each of the acts have a way to to state it exactly the same way every time. It'll be like Act seventy or Act forty six of two thousand nineteen in parentheses after it, you know, whatever the merging, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But have yeah, a really document so we always yeah. do it the same way and everything because not everyone knows what Act 177, right. one Act 166, right. Act 46, you know, there's so many of them that not everyone knows, mm -hmm. and right. you can right. talk all the way from them. Yeah. Maybe. And there's also, because on the Vermont School Board Association website, there is a page on the agenda for a world-class education, there is a document. <coughs> so if we were to be talking here about well, let's just change this in our strategic plan and world-class education is this. It also needs to be kind of reconciled with the document that was created. So mm -hmm. that, that would be right. my hesitation right. on changing just a bunch of the language. Just one, I thought I recalled that, you know, the agenda is a, a really important document for this group for education. But I, I thought it was actually quite, I'm about done to go a, a review for update potentially, or is that correct or not? I'm not sure. I'll have to okay. get back to you about that. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it being it was mentioned at some point, but you know, I, I don't know whether that's that may, that necessary. Might be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking to see what the date is on the current one, because I know we met. Three like or four years ago. Well, it started off in, I've, I've got the 20. summary, which says, um, in 2012, partnered. <laughs> yeah, so the current document is 2016. Okay. So it was mm -hmm. three years ago. Yeah. 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 Um, Dan, as you're looking through this, your recommendation, was it because you see a, a bunch of things in here that you personally want to see no, modified? No, it wasn't. Okay. It was just thought. It, it, it could slow down the process of editing by committee to have them ahead of time. People could say, that one looks good to me, I'd go support that. This one, I don't want to, whatever. Just an idea to expedite, that would be my thought. Right. There may not be any, maybe this is the only one that come up. But, uh, okay, do, do we have any members of the committee that worked on this current version? Do we recall who those folks were and if they're still with us? Were you on that? I don't think I was. Unless it was. I think you were. And I, I, think, I, think, I was very impactful. <laughs> <laughs> and it made a big impact on you. <laughs> so, so much fun. 
Do, can you remind me when? Hmm. This would have been in spring. I okay. remember the process of value, like looking at the results that came in from the survey. But if we can, I apologize because hmm. I'm not going to be able to speak to that you process with any specificity. May 9th, you were. Yes. You were traveling, mm -hmm. so you were calling in. I uh, did it from the road. Okay. Because okay. Celeste was very involved in this. No, she was not involved in this. That was the other committee. Okay. This was um, the two of you, Geo and Floor. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I think we could, if people have. Um, suggestions or questions if they want to email them to me. Um, we could keep a list of those at least and have them um, provided to you in the agenda packet so you could be thinking about them ahead of the meeting. Does that I, work? That works. I, I actually That's prefer perfect. that to the other. I don't want to get into a situation where we're rewriting this entire document by committee online yeah. Yeah. over the course of this next month. David? There's another way of looking at this document which is as a working or living document. So. It's going to evolve. It's going to adjust. It's never going to be perfect. Does it capture the essence of what we need? Is it going to keep us moving in the right directions? If you look at the bullet points, it's not as everything that we should be accomplishing, but some of the areas we should be focusing on within those frameworks. Then I, I think, I mean, I've got lots of questions, and, and I might work <coughs> with diff some things differently, but I think it's very effective the way it's, it's written. So my proposal would be we're all going to have issues with elements of it, but overall, does it go where we want to go? Does it take us to Toronto or wherever we're going? And I think it does, so that's why I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I'm not sure it's necessary to, to go through a long process to work on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm just thinking, <coughs> especially since many of us are new and wouldn't have seen the strategic plan monitoring report. Mm -hmm if it would be helpful to see a more recent monitor report that maybe the end of, you know, FY19. So your last one from last year, last fiscal year, so that we would have a frame of reference for how the staff uses the tool to characterize the work they're doing. And, and it's an awesome tool. Mm -hmm. um, and if it would be helpful, I think, then in seeing how it's used. Right understanding maybe how that relates here. And then the other request might be, and it can be a no, um, is there a red line version so we would see exactly what changed? Like, a, it, is there a do, change, track changes? Like when you see legislation, where you, mm -hmm. you see all the... Yeah, all the just, I didn't how know if you guys created the new strategic plan working from the old and if there's a track changes. I don't believe there is, but okay. I could certainly create that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we can look side by side, too. I just didn't know if there was a track changes. That's a little bit easier than just looking back and forth. Yep. So let me uh, make the following proposal that if over the course of this next month, if there are items in here that board members think need to be updated or changed, to send those proposed changes to Sue. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that I will add is that um, from discussion with both Sue and Susan, the intent with this document is that when you see it next month, it will also include in its strategies, which it doesn't have right now. Those strategies are, are the more particular items, so the actual things, I think, that are going to be in process. And I think that might be an effective way of capturing things like, well, it is Act 173, and this is what we're doing in that particular area. Um, so that you'll see those strategies in there to provide some specificity. But what the board should really focus on is the, is, is the, the statement, the goal statement and the indicators that are in here now, because this is what we'll need approval on next month. I think the addition of the strategy, so the work that the staff's actually going to do, might provide Dan some of that detail and, and Jim that we think might be valuable um, to help with adoption, um, but not necessary for adoption, I would say. Does yeah. that make sense to yes. everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. So please reach out to Sue if you have anything in the next month. Um, moving on to the SBA staffing update. So I wanted to update everyone that uh, we have advertised for uh, a position to 
um, fill the position that I was in. Um, it's slightly different in that we, in the past couple of years, we've had two attorneys here at the BSBA. We weren't sure that we necessarily needed to have two attorneys. The other, um, the position that I left was a director of legal and policy services. Um, the position that we're advertising for is director of public policy. And um, what we are looking for is someone who can look at um, rules that are being proposed, legislation, and um, be able to let us know how is this going to actually affect um, education on the ground, you know, um, how's it, what are the impacts going to be. So uh, it's been advertised for two weeks, I believe, and um, closed yesterday, and um, we'll be doing some interviews next week and then um, see where we go from there. But we wanted to um, make sure that you were all updated and uh, let you know that it's been out there. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Did Either now or you, later. I mean, <laughs> you, did, do you have a, a pool of enough people to respond that you feel comfortable? Uh, yes. Good. Yeah, we have enough people that have responded. And um, I believe we'll be interviewing two or three people. Yeah. Any other questions for so, so besides you, who's going to be involved with interviews? Um, I'm going to, uh, I've asked Susan to be involved, and um, there will be one board member. It will probably be Neil, because he's uh, available to help us, we think. <laughs> <laughs> With unlimited time and energy for it. <laughs> and there may be someone also from one of our partner organizations, either Visbit um, or VPA or VSA, um, if they are available to participate. So that's the current plan. And certainly, you know, if there's a, a board member that has a burning desire to participate, we'd be happy to have you join us. I guess to follow up on, well, this person, I, I, I saw the ad, I thought, that's nice, I, I like the idea of maybe changing it a little bit, uh, but uh, will this person also work um, with the legislative updates? Yes. Okay. That will be a major... That's a pretty valuable service to our members. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. That's yeah. great. Absolutely. So we need to find someone who has that capability. Good. Yeah. And then the intention would be that they might be in place by the December meeting then too. They might be in place by the December meeting. That would be ideal yeah. if they could. We definitely would like to have them by, at, at the latest, by uh, the beginning of the legislative session. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions about the staffing update? All right, moving along then to a resolution for the authorized signers of the VSBA checking account. It this, needs to be updated. Yes. <laughs> so you can get your mileage checks. <laughs> <laughs> or any checks. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so currently we have some old signers on there that need to be updated. She's not that old. For, <laughs> oh, wow, that was uh, cool. Mm, yeah, how do it's I read phrase? Uh, <laughs> we, we have some signers on there that are no longer with the organization. All of this stuff. That way. All of the signers on there are no longer with the association. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so I believe on there right now for the bank's approval is Nicole. <laughs> so it goes so back as that Harry Frank is on there too, who is our previous our previous Susan. Um, so uh, the bank does need um, a board motion, um, and we have crafted one for your uh, entertainment, and that would be. A motion for a resolution to alter the authorized signers on checking account of VSBA as follows. Remove Nicole Mason, Harry Frank, and add Sue Siglowski and Susan Holson. So if a board member were so inclined to make that motion. So move. I'll make that motion. I'll, do that. <laughs> I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. Motion made by Amy, seconded by Dan. Is there any discussion on the motion? Can I just ask if it says checking account in the motion? It does. Can we say checking account slash money market? Because we have a rollover. Sure. Did so we get the language from the bank, or was that? 
Yeah, but they didn't include. They they must not have included the right. money market. Right. Money market's a rollover, but okay, just in case. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. You okay with that, Amy? I am. Are you? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently, following strict Robert's rules, everybody's okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just one, one thought, you know, yep. I, whether, whether two signers is enough and whether, you know, you, you need controls in place and all that, but, you know, potentially, a, you know, like, the, like you being on the, on the account as well as a backup signer or something like that, I don't know. Well, I'm going to guess in the years that we've done this, we haven't had an issue with having two uh, staff members. On I'm guessing right. so we've been, since we've only had one. We've been offering yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. So we do have an internal procedure. Um, the executive director always signs. If she's not available, then um, Susan would sign. But when the executive director returns, she signs off on the, the warrant, the full list, so that she always is responsible because... At one point, we had a problem because we had to have two signatures on checks, but mm -hmm. the problem with that was that, you know, mm -hmm. both people okay. thought the other people checked it. So, ultimately, Sue's, you know, in charge of what goes on with it. Um, and we've usually only kept it to two signers just to restrain. Yep. Okay. Makes sense, Jim? That, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, if there is no further discussion, then... Call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Woo. And we are we're doing great on time. So we are. So I did Oh, sorry. I did. So, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, you do have it. I, I do have the gavel. It was uh, handed to me this evening. I'm not much of a gavel person. So if you guys need it, I can slam it, but I'm just going to let it go for now. Can I, um, can I make, moving on. Oh, sorry. Can Carrie. I make one suggestion? When, okay. we, when we have motions, um, because we take it from the minutes from the camera, if whenever someone makes a motion, if you can say your name and your region, and then make the motion, and if you're going to second, then say your name and your region, and second it, so that we are sure to have everything on. Okay. Thank you. Amy Windsor. Yeah. Dan, Dan Windham. Windham. Yeah. Covered. Dan Windsor. All right. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Um, moving on then to the Building Bright Futures Advisory Council appointments. Yes, I can give some background on uh, Building Bright Futures. Because um, I've actually been serving as the representative on the Building Bright Futures Advisory Council. And uh, that council was established by statute. Um, and it's Vermont's public-private partnership. It's uh, established by 33 VSA Section 4602, if anyone wants to look it up. Um, and its purpose is to advise the governor and the legislature on um, the state's early childhood care, health, and education. Um, it's a rather large council. There's 23 members. Um, there's Secretary of Human Services, or designee, and a bunch of other secretaries or commissioners and their designee, a member of the House of Representatives, there's a member of the Senate, and then there are 14 at-large members. And one of those 14 at-large members needs to be a representative um, of, a it has to be a member of a school board, can be any school board, um, to be recommended by the Vermont School Boards Association. And um, I was a member of a school board up until I became the executive director. At that point, I um, decided that I needed to step down from my board, so I'm no longer um, able to continue serving in that role because I'm not a school board member anymore. Um, so this board needs to um, appoint someone, to, and the process that will happen after that is that name will go to the nominating committee of the Building Bright Futures Council, and then they will um, send the name on to the governor, and the person who, um, whose name it is needs to fill out a bunch of paperwork to the governor um, and then go through the process of getting appointed by the governor. So um, that's the background on what Building Bright Futures is and the process. Um, the, what it involves is um, a monthly meeting that's either in Montpelier or Burlington um, that is during the day. And then there are also um, committee meetings as well. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons that I was doing it is because I could do it. Um, I was a school board member, but I also was in a job here where it, it allowed me to go and um, always attend all of these meetings. So um, I'll hand it back over to Neil at this point um, to let you know about um, finding someone to do that. So <clears throat> before you all get real nervous thinking it's going to have to be one of you folks, <laughs> <laughs> we actually have someone who's willing to fill this role for us. Um, so it is Floor Diaz Smith. Um, yeah. She was a prior uh, VSBA board member um, who was with us up through the annual meeting, but is no longer with us. But um, has agreed to serve in this function uh, on behalf of uh, the VSBA, and I think most importantly uh, has committed that she does have the time for this because it sounds like it can be, um, at least for the short term, rather time consuming. So we have so one. Been but Jim, you were looking for a nomination? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going. So we've got one candidate right now. I'm looking for a nomination if someone would like to make that. I, I will nominate uh, Laura Diaz enough to be the appointment from Jim the Salskiver. SBA for Building Bright Futures Advisory Council. Jim Salskiver, Bennington. Nice. Is there a second for that? It's not necessary. Uh, it's not a... It, one could, but it's not necessary. Well, that's if you're having an election. Yeah, this is not an election. Yeah. This is this and body point. choosing to appoint someone to a commission. Um, it's not right. It's not a nomination, really. It's an appointment, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So. I'll second the nomination. Thank you, Michelle. From Washington. Washington. Brian from Washington. Yeah. Washington. Yeah. Well, it'll take a little getting used to doing that. So <laughs> don't worry. Any discussion on the nomination? Many thanks for yeah. if in fact exactly. you know, yeah. should we vote yay on this one? <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor then say yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Floor gets it unanimously. Um, for those of you who have not yet met Floor, she is a fantastic board member. And we are sorry that she is not on the VSBA board any longer, but very pleased that she was willing to step into this role. So we will let her know the, uh, I guess, the good news, depending on how you look at it. Right. <laughs> the good news. Um, and then moving on now to uh, contract for services related to Act 11 statewide bargaining. So we just wanted to um, update you because um, when we knew that Nicole was going to be leaving, we knew that there was going to be a um, sort of a hole in our organization. Um, and there is a lot of uh, a lot happening, as you know, with the statewide health care bargaining, um, and that is coming to a conclusion within the next uh, month or so. And uh, there will need to be if if they reach an agreement, which we don't know if whether that's going to happen, but if they did, there would need to be a ratification process and, and education um, of of the. Uh, voting delegates from each area before they um, voted. And um, whatever happens, there's going to be um, a need for education um, for board members throughout the state about the agreement that was um, reached or the ar arbitration decision. And then there's also going to need to be education for board members about um, how they conduct their um, bargaining based on what that decision was. Um, so we're working on a contract um, with McNeil, Letty, and Sheehan, which is a um, firm in Burlington, to be able to provide those services um, to us and have continuity um, on, on that. And um, it's not complete yet, um, but I think what we were... Um, hoping for was authorization from the board for me to sign the contract so that that work could um, begin because it's going to have to be pretty much hit the ground running to get that accomplished. Yep. So uh, correct me if I misstate anything, mm -hmm. um, but uh, so for those of you that are new, um, the VSBA has received um, some funds from Visbit. It was a service line agreement and the part of the contingency for us receiving those funds 
was that the VSB was now responsible for providing certain services to our membership. Mm -hmm. um, those services occurred in a couple of categories, but the two are there of importance to us now are um, supports surrounding collective bargaining, and in particular what Sue just mentioned was um, work related to the stuff that's going on with the Act 11 Bargaining Commission. Um, and then the second was also, I think, support for the VHI board. Right, right. right. Um, that money, um, we uh, had a discussion with uh, McNeil, Letty, and Sheehan. Um, the pool of money that we get from Visbit, for the money that we've got left, we asked them whether or not they would be able to provide these services for us since it was part of the contracted agreement with Visbit. Um, and the dollars, at least right now through negotiations, look like they're working out right. Um, that we would be able to support this through the funds that we're getting from Visbit to provide these services. Um, you know, one of the good news is, is that because that's where Nicole went and she was doing this work while she was here, um, she can sort of continue to do that work, but also brings in uh, a whole host of other folks at that firm um, that do this type of work surrounding collective bargaining and support of, of the process. So. Um, we had hoped to maybe have a finalized agreement in place that the full board could uh, look at and review tonight, but we're not quite there yet, but we think we're close. And so tonight we're just looking for authorization from this board to allow Sue um, to finalize and sign that contract. Jim? I'm just curious, do you feel comfortable <coughs> enough with the way the negotiations are going to kind of say that you know, authority subject could continue to be within the, the original financial parameters you know, that the we intended? Yes. That would work? Yes. Yep, so we reviewed the budget today as to how much money we've got allocated for this from the from the Visbit service line agreement. Um, I think we're looking at about $70,000 still available yes. in that yes. money. Um, and the quote that we've received so far, um, I'm allowed to share that at this point, was for um, $6,000 a month for 10 months plus expenses. So I think that the, the financial piece is falling within the parameters of the money that we'll have available for this work. So $60,000 plus expenses, and we've got 70000 on our side to cover this. So, Jen? And this is um, for the express purpose of getting through the settlement, which Adrian's doing for us, and, <laughs> um, and the support to get it ratified and support boards as they negotiate the next round of their contracts, mm -hmm. which will no doubt be react, reacting to the settlement. Um, if there were to be sort of an appeals board, I don't know what will happen out of once the, the, um, the statewide health care is enacted and individual employees are appealing a local school district's decision on something. I, I don't know how far down the process that is, but I am imagining if we need to think about what happens when these things are being implemented, there might be another source for funding, or I don't know if Adrian can even speak to sort of where those sorts of conversations are about how mm -hmm. this works when we're... We had, I mean, the employer commissioners had suggested rounds ago that a grievance process gets set up. I don't know whether or not that will be included in the final decision from the fact finder or from the arbitrator. Right, so, we, okay, so we don't... So there not, may not be a process in place. Yeah. It may just be a free-for-all. <laughs> and for you okay, so new board really members, if you're not familiar, just really quickly, I'll let yeah. you know, Adrian is one of the school board members that sits on that Act 11 bargaining commission, mm -hmm. just so folks are aware. And I didn't mean to get in the weeds on it. I was just mm -hmm. thinking about the available remaining budget and the potential available additional responsibilities that seem to be, have been unanticipated with the legislation, the cost that would be borne by the SBA financially in addition to the use of our name, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, and so yeah. I just put that out there for us to ima imagine that if that were necessary, another layer of administration by virtue of um, an appeals group or something, that we'd probably talk again mm -hmm. with Visbit. 
because they... Well, there was, so it's my understanding from talking with Sue today that there are actually two, so Visbit provided a certain amount of funds to the commission. Yeah. And, but that's separate from what I'm talking about, okay. which is the so funds that they different. provided strictly to the VSBA to handle the educational piece okay. surrounding the work of the commission and then collective bargaining. Okay. So the full funds were provided to the VSBA, but um, it's allocated to the target. commission. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Okay, thank you. And that, and that, is, in, that is in addition to yeah. the 70000 that yes. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it seems to me... Um, so, oh, sorry. Oh, Dan, yeah. one second, because I know yeah. Kevin we, used back yeah, yeah. in before. So, Kevin, go ahead. I'm sorry to butt in, but so do we have a motion on the floor or not? Not yet. Okay. So I would... Um, I think it was Jim or somebody was talking about comparing what we have for funds available from Visbit versus the contract. But I I feel we should have some sort of an upset figure on the contract that we allow Sue to go by. So if there's seventy thousand there and we think that's going to be consumed by this, we should have that specific dollar amount in the motion. Okay. That was my point exactly, Kevin. You okay. took, it, took the words right away, so excellent. Which is not atypical to what we've done in the past. But the executive director search, we said not to exceed right. X amount. So I certainly think that that would be reasonable to include um, in a motion tonight. Um, that being said, is anyone interested in making a motion? Jim. Uh, Jim you look Walls. so enthused to do it. <laughs> <laughs> give us some gusto, man. Jim Zoll's give her a bang then, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I make a motion to approve Sue Siglowski, uh to to complete negotiations and to sign an agreement for a contract for services related to Act 11 statewide bargaining, subject to the financial obligations of the VSBA being within the roughly seventy thousand dollars we we have currently allocated from this contract. Can you repeat that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Uh, is there a second? I'll second, George. Second. Kind of Robin. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. The motion passes. All right, um, moving on then to executive committee election. So, um, for those of you that are new, uh, just a little brief outline here. So you might be curious as to why we have a president but nobody else this evening. Um, so the VSBA president is elected in August um, to then begin the term at the end of the annual meeting. So that is why we have a president, but what we are missing um, are all the other members of the executive committee. Executive committee. So the vice president, the treasurer, and then two members at large. So that is what we have to take up for the remainder of the evening tonight. And so first up then, um, going in order, I will look for nominations for vice presidents. David. I nominate Jim Salzger. Okay. David. We don't. As Dan pointed out earlier, you do okay. not need a second. No, nope. I, I can't find that. I know. <laughs> so we've got uh, when, when we get in trouble, we've got our okay. little book here. <laughs> but we do not need a second on nominations. So we have Jim Salzgiver. Neil, Are there any other email. nominations? Neil, check your email, please. Is your hand up? I do. I would like to nominate Don Collins, Dan MacArthur, Wyndham Region. Thank you. I'm not connected to the internet yet. Hang on. <laughs> Sue, it's on yours. Too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to get there. Mm, you beat me. Intrigue. I know. Yeah, it's it's killing me, too. I can't. I can tell you look so nerved up right now. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have an email from me? Out and never okay. My email hasn't updated yet, so that's why I'm not seeing it. <laughs> when technology fails. <laughs> 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 
I'm this old school and you carry that. Yeah. 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 You don't need paper. You just carry it out. Exactly yeah. sure what it is. Okay. Something. Shoves a laptop along the counter. <laughs> Oh, okay, there's a nomination in there. Okay. Um, so now we also have a nomination for Dan for Vice President. Yeah. I'm going to decline that nomination. I don't know who it came from. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, appreciate it, but I mean, we can not say, so the email was, that was from uh, Judy. Yeah, so it did come from Judy. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Judy. Okay. So who's who's no longer on the phone because she drove into Canada to disconnect. Oh, yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right, so, but you are declining the nomination? I am, yes. Okay. So, are there any other nominations for vice president? Okay, seeing none, we're going to close nominations and then move on to the vote. You will get a, we'll get a paper ballot. Yep. Mr. Chairman, do, do we have a chance to speak? If there are no objections, I will allow the candidate to <coughs> speak ahead of the vote. Anyone opposed to hearing from our candidates for vice president? As a new person, I think it would be helpful because otherwise I have nothing. <laughs> and I understand the frustration but blank piece associated of paper. with that. Um, Flip of the coin, and I will go with Don Collins. C. C is the first letter. C. Uh, and, and just so you know, the reason that I asked that is that as I look around this room tonight, and I looked around the room four years ago, there aren't many of us still here. Uh, and so I think that, you know, win, lose, or draw, I just think that there's some points that I want to make having been here four years. And maybe if I kept my mouth shut, I'd stand about a chance of getting elected. But, uh, you know, I, I think this is a real exciting time in this organization. I, I really do. I think Sue and Susan uh, have shown over the last year, maybe more than that last year, that they really are strong on what I call outreach. You know, it's great that some of us come here uh, every month, but <coughs> this room should be a lot fuller than it is tonight. There are a lot of people uh, who aren't here and aren't on the phone. So one of the things I would like to see, and uh, Jim wins this, then maybe he'll carry this ball, but I really think we need to come up for a plan uh, for recruitment to get people on this board. It kind of seems to me that somebody comes to the meeting and says, I didn't get elected uh, to my local school board, I'm not going to continue, and weeks and months go by and we have vacant seats. And having served on other boards, that's not a very effective process when a fourth of your board members aren't here on any given meeting or a third. So that's one thing I really would like to see us work on. Uh, I think I have the time to work with Susan and the executive committee and Neil on something like that. The other thing is, uh, I don't know how many of you were at the meeting in Fairley, but resolutions to me, this is, they're really the backbone. This is, that's what we're all about, the resolutions. I don't think we have a big problem in getting resolutions. I think we work hard to try to get them out there. But the number of people who then participate in deciding if they're going to be supported for the legislature, I think there's some improvement we can do there. So that, that's another thing that I really would hope uh, that we address during the next year. And probably this last one is probably my biggest concern. I think Sue has done it well, and I was glad to hear her tonight say uh, the new person, they've changed the job description a little bit. I'm so old that I remember in the legislature that when you said this is VSBA's position, people nodded and said, we need to do it. Because they were talking with their local school board members and the VSBA people that went to the legislature uh, had the support of the people in the local towns. Uh, certainly there was some disagreement, um, but I, I remember I was a lobby, I was on the lobbying committee for the Superintendents Association, and we were not held in the same high regard as VSBA. It was an uphill battle sometimes when there were different positions because VSBA was. I think we've lost that. And I say that 
because I'm still in contact with a number of legislators. Sometimes I call them, sometimes they call me. Uh, I'm not sure why they do, but I, some of them might stick. I'm still there. But I, I think we're going to have to work really hard to make sure that the VSBA voice is seen as one that speaks for local school districts and how local school districts direct them, which takes me back to the resolutions. So those are three things I'd really like to see us work on, whether I'm elected or not. But I will tell you this, if I am elected to be vice president, then certainly I'll be talking with the rest of the executive board and with Sue on how I can help as a team player, not how I can work as an individual school board member, but how I can work on behalf of the SBA. So that's who I am. I, I've been come on the school board 15 years now. I've been on one board, two boards, now three boards. Uh, worked a lot in the legislature, and uh, the legislature is a tough place. It really is a tough place uh, because other groups are there full time, and uh, you can't be there full time necessarily with VSBA. And then there's the whole: how do you keep your electorate? You know, how do we keep our people informed out in the field? So I think those are some things that I hope are worked on. And if I'm elected, then certainly I'll ask uh, to be part of that. Thank you. Jim. Okay, great. Uh, I, I am not a past politician, and I, and I didn't really prepare a campaign speech, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, you know, basically, you know, I've, I've been on the VSBA board, been on school boards for, you know, about a you know, dozen years. Um, and just on the VSBA board, for the past couple, it's been a fabulous experience. I mean, the VSBA board, I, you know, sort of resisted joining it at first, and that was a really stupid mistake, and it's been a wonderful experience. In the last year, also joining the, essentially, the executive committee, so being a little bit more involved in, in you know, some of the decision-making things. You know, back in the, before I was on that, it was always, well, how do they do things? And, you know, now I sort of know, and I think that, uh, you know, it's it it's important to always keep in mind that you know that this this organization, whether it's the executive committee, the full board, or whatever, you know, we are representing um, a a larger group of people. The executive committee recognize or or uh, is is acting on behalf of the board. You know, trying to ensure that they that they understand what the board and you know, especially through the resolutions and all understand what the board is trying to accomplish, what the organization is trying to accomplish. Um, I think it's, you know, tonight we have the strategic and operation, operational plan, the resolutions. I also, you know, go to bylaws and other documents like that that, that define what this organization is about. One of my, you know, focus, one, one focus for me on, uh, you know, trying to, you know, any of my school board related positions, including this, is you know, trying to do the right thing and, re and, and represent the organization and the people, you know, I'm working on behalf of in the, in the best way possible. I think this, this past year has, has, has taught me a whole lot about how the VSBA works and how education and legislation and education, et cetera, works in the state of Vermont. Um, continue to be, you know, I, I, I love the work. So, you know, I'm, I'm interested in continuing to, to, you know, take somewhat larger of a role this year. The, the Vice President typically oversees the resolutions process, which I've made some suggestions in the past that make that a little bit more of a year-round thing, where, where we kind of keep, continue to keep the resolutions in mind, you know, all our, all our, you know, school board members and all recognizing that that's what we do. Um, or that's you know that's the focus of the organization is to is to make progress on those resolutions. I think this year, is, as Don said, this year is a, a pretty big year, in that we've had a couple of tough years. We've you know Act 46 was extremely tough on school boards around the state, school board members, especially tough on the BSBA. Um, you know, we lost a little bit of credibility because people thought we were not acting you know, on, on their behalf. I think we have some real work to do, and I think we're in an excellent position uh, in the coming year 
to to try to repair some of that, you know, some of the little dings and uh, you know dents that we we that got put into the VSBA over the past year. Um, I think with new leadership, and I think Sue is the perfect perfect person to be leading the organization. I think Neil is also you know going to be excellent trying to. Uh, Trying to put the VSBA, and this is, you know, it's what, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Don, and, you know, what Don said, you know, having the organization be viewed as, you know, the positive organization that it is, and, and its voice is extremely important. I think we've, we've got a little bit of work, you know, with our membership and, you know, at the state level to do it. I think we've got the right resources in place to do that, and, you know, frankly, I'd just like to be a more significant part of helping make that happen. Thank you to both of our candidates. Does everybody have their little ballot script? Oh, you need one too. Oh, I want one too. And then, um, will you collect them? Yes. Or, okay. Do oh, I get two? Uh, no, you don't get one. <laughs> that would be cheaper. Cool. And do we have a, a, a reasonable method of getting the votes off of the phone? Ah, oh, we hadn't thought about that. Kevin. Um, Kevin and... They could email them. Kevin, yeah, me. do you have access to email right now, Kevin? Yes, I do. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind emailing your vote to Sue Siglowski, and Christina, are you still with us? I am, yeah. I'm back again. Yeah. Okay, and do you have access to email? Yep, I can get on email. Uh, Sue Siglowski, please. Okay. Did Judy go away? Yes. Judy she did. She went into Canada. <laughs> she went into Canada. <laughs> She's so, lost yeah, self she over self <laughs> I'm like the offering plate. I know. Like, I felt bad not putting it down. Our two That's candidates it. are Jim Salzgiver and Don Collins. Those are your two choices for voting. All right. I'm going to go out in the hall and count them. I don't have any emails yet, so okay. while I'm counting. Do you need help? <laughs> sure. This is Kevin. I just found one. Okay. So, I was trying I'm to trying. Like I'm smelling that. <laughs> okay. I was, I was I trying to figure out how to count. I look at your votes. Back to the automated voting game. No, so the good news was that we did this year at the annual meeting. We actually had three participants online and spoke with Kay and it went swimmingly. Fine, yeah. That's no awesome. problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, it went, I thought yeah. it went really well. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. They, right. they were able to keep yeah. up well, and yeah. participate. Yeah. And <laughs> there was only, we, we could only go up from the previous year's experience, but uh, we chose a less complicating technology um, and then just ran the meeting and uh, so I, I think uh, um, that was a very positive result. Mm -hmm. We do have some time to spend on. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Christina. Um, my email will not send. There's some alternative she can text do you want to try a somebody? text message, or do you want to... Um, she can call the office or you could, she's on the phone. What's that? Yeah. Oh, well, she has have a cell phone or something. Okay. Sue, yes. can Christina text you her results? She's having issue with email. Yes. And so we just need a phone um, number. 802-275-8666. I got to go get my phone. It's in my office. <laughs> that would help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 802-275-8666. Two seven five eight six six six. So the clever way for me to get the personal phone of the uh, of the executive director. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were on. Now it's on the television. <laughs> so you know. She's executive director. Everybody's going to have that. Moment, so I don't. I don't think there's any worry there. <laughs> no, I was going to say, Neil. The only thing we need to work on for the annual meeting is 
what a motion looks like relative to a resolution. Yes, I, we already I had that discussion. Plenty of staff. <laughs> and that is going to be one of the things that we, we will work that came on. Up to a <laughs> we will work on simplifying that process for the next Amen. annual meeting. That is one of my goals. Yep. You never so want to So I know that. that again. Uh, so I know Kevin emailed you, and then I believe we're just waiting for a text from uh, Christina. It says it went. <laughs> Okay. Just a second, let me make sure I've got this right. Yep. And I believe it was received, Christina. Don and eight for Jim. Wow, well, that's close. I could. Practically tied. <laughs> Thank you. So that Thank is you both. Yes. Of the voting of total population. Everyone voted. How many people voted? Um, well, 17. Uh, 17. Well, I just want to make sure that we have 17 because it needs to be a majority. I would say that. Right. If it's not a majority, then we have to do it over again until we get a majority. 16, 17. Okay. 17. Because two people on the yep. 15, 15 here 15 plus two. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you both. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Jim, I want to nominate you because I think your term on the board at large expires. Wait a minute. I've got one from Lori Childers. Hold on. Oh, you can't yeah. say that. I'm no sorry, I didn't know she was uh, on the phone even. It sort of makes it less than anonymous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily anonymous, but it isn't. Lori, nice. are you on the phone? Is it nice to have you? She didn't send me anything, so. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh, wait. Yeah, I've got it. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change yeah. the result. Okay. So... Uh, that is Don Collins. Congratulations, Don. I'm Vice President. Thank you. And as I started to say, that it would not have been settled. I think Jim was appointed or elected in June to the board, and it said his term was through Jane, uh, to November, if you read the minutes. The minutes from? The June meeting. The June meeting. Elected to the Executive Committee. Executive Committee. Yes. Correct. Was member June, elect. at the annual meeting. Not at a regular meeting, but at the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. Retreat. You, were the no, retreat. you were nominated to fill out the position that Lewis, I believe, had. Right. And, uh, which would mean that in November, which is tonight, he should be re-elected. Or somebody should be re-elected. Members at large. Yeah. Everybody is. Yep, although I'm going to, if you want to, I was going to move on to, I got to go in order, so I was going to okay, treasure I'll next. take time out then. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm going to nominate Kim Gleason for treasurer. Okay. We have Kim. Um, do we have any Name other? Name and Jim Salzman. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any other nominations for treasurer? <laughs> On the phone, any nominations for treasurer? Can't get that one away. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna close nominations for treasurer, and I'm just gonna do the old everyone in support of Tim say yay. 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. I appreciate the opportunity to help transition us to a regular fiscal year. So we have been waiting on this one, and I'm grateful to be able to serve through that one. And then I can't wait for somebody else to do it. <laughs> but thank you, Jim. All right. And then uh, we have um, openings for... Um, Two at-large members, and I'm wondering if the best way to handle it is just to do one at a time? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So for the first member at-large position, I will take a nomination. This is the third time. <laughs> Don Collins from Franklin Region. Oh, oh yeah, Don Franklin got... Region. Thank nice. you. Nice. Any other nominations for the at-large member position number one? On the phone, any nominations for the at-large member position number one? <coughs> Seeing no more nominations. Everybody in favor of Jim say yay. 
I don't believe I don't believe that a ballot is required if you only have one nominee and they're willing to serve. And yeah, it works. Uh, and I just thought it was uh, it was okay to do. Um, and now we have one more member at large slot, so we will take nominations for that one. Uh, oops, sorry, Amy. Amy McMillan from Windsor. I nominate Adrian. All right. Are there any other nominations for our at-large member position number two? On the phone, any other nominations for our member at-large position number two? Seeing none. And I haven't turned it down, huh? <laughs> so quickly, all yeah, those yeah. in favor of entering? Yeah. 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 Just squeaked it in. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So, um, thank you, folks. You now have your executive committee for the VSBA for the next year. I want to thank everyone who was willing to throw their hat in the ring and all those who um, were elected. It's great. Um, moving on then to consent agenda. Um, in the packet, you will see minutes from both the September and October board meetings. Uh, any modifications or changes to those minutes? Seeing none, then I will look for a motion. Motion to accept the consent agenda. Can sit in the Is there a second? Second, Dan MacArthur, Wyndham. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. Consent agenda is approved. Um, new business. Is there anything that any board member would like to see on a future agenda for this group? Neil, how will we handle... Um, the um, the way the ins health insurance comes out. What, what what will we? I mean, next meeting we have, we might know something. The um, report comes out December fifteenth. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> I mean, he might come out early, but probably yeah. not. Yeah. So there's a good chance that we is that. I mean, there's a lot of nuances around it. I mean, we heard Sue describing it in a couple of different ways. We heard about appeals. Um, an yep. information session around that would be really helpful, I think, for us board members. Yep. We have Patrick Healy on our board, so we can we can do that. But I think it's huge. So. <coughs> we may be able to have uh, Elizabeth ask Elizabeth if she could come. Um, yeah, she's, yeah. The, she's the chair of so, that. Yeah, Elizabeth is the chair of the Act 11 Commission, at least for um, the school board side mm -hmm. of the negotiations. We're just starting so. negotiations. Um, yeah, cycle. and we'll have a um, webinar. So too. yeah, I mean, yes. and and uh, honestly, that is the purpose of the contract that we just talked about and gave Sue approval to sign is that, um, you know, their their firm now will be in charge of developing the educational materials related to, so once a decision is out there, so if it's the arbitrator's decision and they say, here it is, this is what everybody's getting, then the those folks will engage in determining, I think, some of the educational materials that boards will be asking for to be like, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. What what is what impact does this have on me? What does it mean for my negotiations? What are the healthcare options now that are available to us? Uh, what are the recommendations on how we might proceed through negotiations locally? Um, that sort of stuff. So we know we know it's going to be desired and wanted, um, and that is the purpose of our agreement with with the firm. Um, yeah. That, that, that the but as much as we can have information on timelines. And um, some of that other information that isn't quite as general, it's helpful for our constituents and taking back to our superintendents. And yeah. And, and even yeah. so, I felt um, that the teachers we already met once, they knew more than we did. Mm -hmm. that, that what they're getting for their updates was more thorough than what we were getting. And as a it also we, wasn't always correct. Yeah. True. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. But but even our business manager commented that it felt like they knew a lot more than we did. So it, wasn't true. It, <laughs> it made us feel like we were at a disadvantage. So I would also argue that it's possible that they might be sharing stuff with their membership that they shouldn't be sharing at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, were they going to release yeah. information on the two proposals prior to the one being picked? 
I don't believe so. But so I'm not right absolutely I, positive. I thought I heard around the first. Yeah, I, I remember hearing something similar mm -hmm. to that too, but then I know uh, I talked with Elizabeth last week and I asked her that question and she was uncertain as to whether or not that was true. So um, I, we'll follow up with Elizabeth and find out whether or not we know if those if those two proposals will be released prior to Even that would be good to know ahead of time. Yeah. No, I agree. At least you would know what the two extremes are going to, you know, what the possibilities are. So it's bad news and, and bad news. And, and to, your, to your to your point, yes. to your point, Tara, Tara um, I'll say that we had teachers call our office and say we were told by the NEA that we don't we won't get any insurance, we won't have any insurance at all. So it's not necessarily true what they're okay. So if, if uh, there are no other items that you would like to see on the future agenda items, I am more than happy to release everyone. And I want this Just noted in the record. <laughs> <laughs> I got a text from Lori Childers saying she's on the phone, but she can't unmute. So okay. oh, I asked her if there was anything that she wanted me to convey. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm sorry that we can't hear you, Lori. Uh, Don. I think I heard Sue say maybe by the next meeting we would have a person who's going to fill the vacant position. Possibly. Or at least we may, we may know who they are. I'm not sure if they'll be here by okay. then. But we Why I say nice. that is, uh, last weekend I just happened to be talking with some legislators in my area, and they've already had a, at least one caucus, maybe more, in the House and Senate to start framing their priorities. And so as soon as we can get this person, it would be good to at least introduce them to people in key positions mm -hmm. before the session starts. Yep. So I don't think it has to be on the agenda. Maybe it has to be on your agenda as president, but right. uh, we can see if that happens. Yeah. No, we know it's a, it's a position I think that we want to make sure that we fill soon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like I said, I want it to be noted that my very first meeting as chair. <laughs> Go ahead. You got time. <laughs> 12 or 13. You got time. Go ahead. Colleen McKinnon, um, Chittenden Grand Isle. When is the original first date of our service if we're new? The day after the board is it meeting. Today? Okay. The day after the conference. Uh, so I will say in, in reviewing the bylaws, um, I think that there is some language clarification that can happen there because in one section, I believe it states that it is the right at the end of the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. And in another section, it says, I think, November 1st. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So go for but, November 1st. So in, yeah. In either scenario, you certainly are, you're, you're all on now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking to delay it, if that was your question, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, just for some, it's important to have a, a real date. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I have a question. No, go ahead. <laughs> so I'm up for re election. I the mark. first of the year. What happens if I don't get re elected to the school board? I believe under the bylaws, you would be able to serve until. Um, yeah, the year I think yes. That's right. Yeah. 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 Or until the regional meeting. Until, until the regional meeting. Yeah. Which is in the fall. Uh, right. I don't anticipate not being reelected. I just want to make sure I know where it was to be. There's not a long line of people you wanting know. to take care of it. They don't reelect you, you can do a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> But you might have a lot of friends around the table now that would be willing to help in your re-election campaign. Go fund me. So, Colleen, are you okay with uh, your official? I'm, I'm just curious. I think we could just <laughs> say November 1. I mean, I can make it up. Or November, 1. <laughs> <laughs> November 1, is that what we should say? And Lori, who can't unmute herself, have asked me to convey um, that she wanted us to consider how to light a fire under the AOE to help us with declining enrollment. Okay. Second. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so all of those items we will consider for uh, future agendas, but if nobody has anything else, then I think you are free to go. Thank you so much, board. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there still